Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. And today, we're going to talk about buyer's remorse and why the Demon 170 is probably going to go down in history as one of the most remorseful purchases for so many buyers, which is why there's a good chance prices are going to continue to slide. And if you want one, you will not have to pay the stupid prices that are going on out there. But today, we're going to Cars and Coffee, like we always do with the fam. There's Kendall, Alex, Brandon in the Jeep. Boy, I love that Jeep, dude. Let's go off-roading. Let's bring it back covered in mud. Let's bring it back covered in mud. Yes, we should. Not at all. Not at all. That's his dad's car, so we could do something stupid in that thing. Let's jump on the road, get a little, little footage on the way, and then we'll have this conversation in depth. And I think it'll be very informative and help you see why all the hype is just that. Let's go. I still can't believe that's your car. <laughs> Me either. <laughs> What's happening? What's that sound? I think Alex was doing the burnout. It wasn't me and it wasn't Brandon, so. Uh, it had to be Alex. Jeez, it freaked me out. I thought somebody was running the light. <laughs> I pulled up to block whatever car was going to hit you with my Lambo. That's fatherhood. That's fatherhood right there. <laughs> a mess. A uh, couple spare tires, no rear window, no license plate. There's no way at insurance. Uh, those are the people you just get far, far away from. That dude is stereotyping like a mother. You just put the window sticker up on the windshield. I mean, it's a sick vet, don't get me wrong, but he, he's got new balances on. Those might be black new balances. That's awesome. You gotta love the Corvette owners. You just gotta just love the no shame in their game. Just stick the window sticker on the car. I'll show you. This is great. All right, here's the zero one vet. This thing is nuts. Freaking rocket. 755 horsepower, 715 foot pounds of torque, 0 60 in 2.8 seconds. Top speed 212, not governed at 149. Sorry, had to say it. Look at that. This thing is a freaking rocket. It probably beat almost everything on this row. It costs more than it. Pretty cool. And look at that, folks. Ferrari Testarossa. This is great. V12 Ferrari. 80s. This thing is awesome. And it is for sale. I think he wants like 120 for it. So, I know you're going to say, well, I'd rather have a demon than that. But this will not lose a dollar in value and will keep going up. So, not a bad investment there. He just serviced everything because that is where you lose the money. You don't lose any money on the car. But you lose a ton of money on keeping it on the road. But he's already done all the work on that car. Oh, I wish I had a little bit extra money and a lot more parking. Wow. Look at all those cylinders. Look at that monster. It was so much fun when it needs the engine out for service. And Daily Driven Exotics is here. There's Damon in the Senna. Look at that. He brought the Senna out. Woo. Look at that thing in person. Alright, hey, you're gonna go over there. <laughs> 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 
I do. I'm yeah, like mine's totally doing together, the, doing the Corvette clothes. We're supposed to get yeah. those together, man. Let's, let's go. You already got it, dude. I saw you doing. I saw you uh, doing donuts in the. Like the donuts. Oh, what was like that thing? That, that Ferrari. Like the, the first time you almost hit the wall, but then you ripped I it and got it. Close. It looked me. scary. I never seen oh, Damon shed a tear, dude. <laughs> <laughs> did you bring the Lambo? I did. I I've been sleeping in it for like a month. <laughs> what in the heck? <laughs> Gotta love this thing, man. Oh, shit. He made a truck, a Tesla into a truck. All right, so that was fun. Now let's go jump in the car and have a conversation about buyer's remorse with this Demon 170. All right, let's get started. But first, I want to plug a book. It's called Flip Your Life by Tarko Musa. He is the star of the hit TV show on HGTV, Flip or Flop, and has done many things since then. And we've been friends long before he was on TV, long before he reached this this meteoric level of success. Bought a gun, Corey. <laughs> yeah, huh? And I couldn't be more proud of him and just inspired by him. And in chapter seven of this book, you can get it on the Apple Store. I think you can get it on Amazon. I'll put a link below where you can get it as well. But for whatever, 20 bucks, whatever it is for the book. It's worth every penny, extremely inspirational. It's not just about flipping houses, it's about completely turning your life around. He's extremely honest in this book, shares so many great stories, and in chapter seven, I'm a big part of the story, and I'm flattered that he tells the whole story, how we met, and where that relationship went, and how it fits into his level of success. And I thought, I gotta plug his book. I been reading it and I'm almost done with it when I got to chapter 7 I'm like I gotta tell you all go buy the book flip your life by Tarek T-A-R-E-K Al Musa and go to chapter 7 and if that's the only chapter you want to you want to you want to listen to or read go for it because it's the best one because yours truly is in it all right let's talk about the demon 170 and why I think the buyer's remorse is is apparent already in pricing in stagnation in the market in the amount of these cars that are sitting and not selling, the amount of these dealers that are hoarding these cars and not selling them and holding out for ridiculous prices and not getting anywhere near those prices. There's something to be said about a car that's marketed at 278000 and sells for 178000 It screams out that the prices are just fake. The prices are created to create posts and, and all kinds of viral stories about the ridiculous price. But to date, few if anyone has paid those stupid prices yes at the beginning you saw a few of them at au auctions but they're not going for that and what we see now more and more and I'm finding dealers that are now doing 50,000 over and some less as more and more of these cars are showing up I heard one recently where a dealer actually let it go for a sticker and gave them some I don't know extra stuff to make the deal now I think there was more to that story and I will probably hear about it at some point but whatever the hell it is for a dealer to say fine we'll go ahead and let this car go that speaks volumes and I'm not bashing the thing I'm just telling the truth that based on the amount of these cars go watch butter the insiders videos on this that so many hundreds of more of these cars still getting delivered and just sharing my own experience with my demon 170 that it's a spectacular car, but anyone, and I know I, I knew better than this, but anyone thinking that they're going to be able to use that car for anything other than cars and coffee, flexing out there at meets and stuff, or the racetrack, that's the main place for it, or to keep it in your garage covered in plastic and a cover and on blocks so you don't destroy the tires, and keeping it for 20, 30, 40 years as a collector car there's not any any real other purpose of that car and that's okay we knew that it was built for one thing go really fast in the quarter mile that's it go really fast in the quarter mile and maybe 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 on, on on some random random circumstances where everything in the universe is perfect you might be able to beat a Tesla Platt that's that car so for that reason and by the way we recently learned it's going to stop 
or at least it's going to it's not go past 149 miles an hour, despite people thinking that they can do 215 miles an hour per prior statements by Dodge or on Dodge Garage. So those are issues. And those are issues because I believe that people who bought them are used to, like I was used to, buying these cars and they were street cars that could be tracked. Even the Demon in 2018 was a street car that could be tracked and it came with a crate to prep it for the track and then unprep it for the street again and then drive it on the street and I see them all the time at car meets and events and people are driving them. I see them on the road. I see them for sale with lots of miles. So these cars were driven out on the street People driving them to work, driving them daily, they're they're fine. Yeah, they're eating a lot of gas and everything else, but they're okay doing that. The Demon 170, absolutely not. It makes no sense for any other reason other than just catastrophically killing the values, but you've got a drag setup. Skinnies in the front, wides in the back, drag radials that absolutely are terrifying and flat out dangerous. The disclosure you sign also says this car will kill you if you drive it in the rain. So. For those reasons, oh, by the way, with ethanol, you're getting like eight miles to the gallon. Now, you shouldn't be buying it to be driving it and getting gas mileage, great gas mileage, and dailying it and stuff like that. But there are people who spend this kind of money thinking, oh, it's going to be cool to drive this thing around and flex it. It's not. It needs to go to the track, or it needs to sit in your garage as a collector car. That's it. It's a showpiece, unless you're going to the track. Now, how many out of the 3,000 of these things built do you think will ever see the racetrack. I'm going to guess that less than 10% of these things will ever see a racetrack. That means that there's 2,700 of these cars that are just languishing in garages, sitting at cars and coffee, doing some stupid stuff on the streets that they shouldn't be doing. That's that's an issue. And that's why I think, with in addition to all the hundreds of these cars that are hitting the market, that are sitting at the sitting on dealers, sitting on eBay, coming from the manufacturer to dealers, getting sold to you know flippers and people who don't know what they're getting into completely, but got caught up in the hype. That there's going to be, and there already has been. I've talked to plenty of other Demon 170 owners. I've talked to plenty of Mopar people, and who are hearing these stories that people are wondering, wait a minute, what did I just do? And if there's so many coming on the market because people can't use them, if there's so many coming on the market because they're finally getting delivered to dealers, and if there's so many out there sitting at ridiculously high overpriced prices, as those prices come become more realistic, that will be almost tantamount to flooding the market with more cars once they become sellable at real prices, that prices have to be affected. And now, those who bought it as an investment thinking they'd be wealthy off of that car are going to lose that. Go watch my video why it costs $50 a mile to drive your Dodge Demon. So I looked up buyer's remorse and I wanted to read this to you and, and for you just to think about this and I'll end with this. If this sounds familiar with many cars that we've bought, including Hellcats, I bought what three, three Hellcats now? So two Hellcats and I'll tell you the red eye was great when gas prices were really low and I didn't have to drive as many hours or many miles as I have to now. But I love that car, it's a great car. But I'm thinking if you're on any kind of budget whatsoever and you don't like spending over $1,000, 1500 a month in gas, you might want to get a daily driver and it would make a lot more sense. And I did, I ended up with a ridiculous Prius. So let me read, read what buyer's remorse is and tell me if this doesn't ring true and seem logical with so many cars that I think will come up on the secondary market while people are trying to get great money for these cars. So here's the deal. Buyer's remorse refers to a range of negative feelings a customer might experience after making a purchase. This can include anxiety, regret, disappointment, and guilt. This phenomenon will usually start with thoughts like, did I really need to buy this? Could I have bought it at a lower price elsewhere after you paid $200,000 for your demon and now you find one at a dealer willing to do 50 over? or 25 over. That's a feeling you could have. Should I have waited for a sale? Well, those who bought cars last year, whether it was a Hellcat or a Scat Pack or an RT or a GT, 
are now kicking themselves because now you're getting discounts on almost all of those cars. Even Hellcats, you're getting discounts. You find the right dealers, sitting on cars, been sitting there a long time, you're getting discounts. So that's going to really weigh on people right now, seeing that so many people overpaid and are buried in their cars or burned a lot of cash. So that's going to drive buyer's remorse even, even further. What if there's a superior alternative? Well, there is. If you're going to spend $200,000 for a car, you have that kind of money. It makes sense when you look at the Demon to maybe go and look at a few other cars. Maybe go look at a Lamborghini. Maybe go look at a Resto Mod Challenger or Charger that has a much better chance of holding its value because it's probably plateaued at this point. So if you're going to spend that kind of money, could you get something ultra rare, already plateaued with little risk that does amazing things? Unless you're going to the track, then Demon's great. Could you go buy a 2018 Demon for a lot less money? So what are the alternatives? If you're going to spend $200,000, you could buy this Lamborghini I'm sitting in right now for $195,000. So if you're all of a sudden hurled into the $200,000 price range, why wouldn't you at least consider going out and seeing what you could get for $200,000 rather than just saying, I'm a Dodge guy, I'm going to go get the Dodge. And I think that's where after they have the car, and many of you have done this, I know I've done this, after you have the car and you're driving the car and you've had it for two or three months and you continue to make payments on it or you're looking at your bank account and you're missing $200,000 because you paid cash, that it, it was fun for the first two or three months, but now there's not a lot you could do with that car. And you've got this very expensive 5,000 pound, 4,500 pound thing taking up massive amounts of space in your garage. And that's why I think you're going to see a lot of these cars come back on the secondary market for sale. And the scary thing is, is if you're in the demon groups, a lot of these demon groups, these guys are scramming a little bit, worried about the prices and holding firm on the prices. When one guy got on the, on the group and said, hey, anybody know if there's any way I can get one at sticker? The, the, the comment section caught on fire because every one of those guys, for the most part, most of them, paid massive markups and their worst nightmare is to see somebody get one at sticker and then put that in the group and then feel like well I just got posed there's no way you can not feel that way so it's called let's let's talk about cognitive dissonance similar thing and I'll end this buyer's remorse is generally linked to cognitive dissonance a state of psychological discomfort which occurs when a person makes a purchase but feels dissatisfied because it doesn't do over 149 miles an hour. I'm sorry, it doesn't say that. Because it doesn't do what you want it to do, like drive daily, daily drive it every single day. Um, drive it in the rain. Uh, get any semblance of, of reasonable gas mileage by having a, a black key that would drop the horsepower down to something that would make it palatable to be able to drive on the street to events without having to stop two times to get gas. The next one, the marketing copy was misleading. Like maybe it said it would do 215 miles an hour and it won't now. Um, they realized that there's a better offer elsewhere. Dealers now are starting to slowly but surely sell these things for less money. And with more cars coming on the market, they're gonna see that. Next, they don't they don't think they actually need it anymore. So, and they have an example here that doesn't fit as well, because it's I don't know, it's about some little you know, buying a fragrance or something. But let's tie this to the Demon 170. You bought it, you're excited about it, you got caught up in the hype, you love the big helicopter drop, everything that goes along with this car, and now you've got it, and you're driving it for a couple months, and the car, it, it's it's cool, but it's you can't use it for anything. There's no tracks nearby, you can't go anywhere. All these things, all this cognitive dissonance starts to come into your head, and they go, well, I should just sell it. Generally, it's the spouse that says, Honey, can you sell that thing since you don't drive it anymore? You're not taking it to the track. You're not doing anything with it. And then next thing you know, it goes on the market. And it goes on the market at a loss. First, it goes up at a ridiculous price. That's, we're going to see a lot of that. So I think over this next two, three months, you're going to see ridiculous prices continue, asking prices. Sale prices drop. And then after about three months or so, you'll see the people who just can't keep them, it doesn't make no sense, they don't want to keep making their payments, whatever it is, start dropping those prices down, and you're going to be able to get one 
for a really good price. So it's a great car, and if you can get it for the right price, you should certainly get one, experience one. They're amazing, but make sure you review this video, write down all the points I made so that a month or two or three months later, when you've decided that this was, I should go get myself something that I could drive way more often, enjoy way more often in my daily life even, that you're not upside down on that car and you could go ahead and sell it and move it. So my advice to you is if you've got to have one, if you're still sitting around waiting, avoid buyer's remorse, avoid cognitive dissonance, and review these issues here. Make sure they're not going to rear their ugly head to you. Make sure that you're 100% all in, and make sure you didn't go out and search, you know, make sure you do go out and search to see what your alternatives are. Make sure you understand what you're going to use that car for, and then buy that car for the price that you feel it's really worth, not what the world's telling you it's worth, not what eBay's telling you it's worth, not what the auctions are telling you it's worth, especially not what the dealers are telling you it's worth. Get your hand on one so you don't have these horrible feelings after you get that car and you can actually enjoy it. So with that, stay tuned for more videos coming up soon. I'll get another one up on more OC Motivator very soon as well. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you think it'll help anybody in your life, please share it, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.